Exploring transformations. Our objective is to apply transformations to points and sets of points, as well as interpret transformations of real-world data. Why learn this? Changes in recording studio fees can be modeled by transformations. However, let's start with some vocabulary. A transformation is a change in the position, size, or shape of a figure. A translation is a slide, a transformation that moves each point in a figure the same distance in the same direction. A reflection, also known as a flip, is a transformation that flips a figure across the line of reflection. A stretch is a transformation that pulls the points of a graph horizontally away from the y-axis and vertically away from the x-axis. A compression is a transformation that pushes the points of a graph horizontally toward the y-axis and vertically toward the x-axis because you're compressing the graph. Let's look at translating points. Perform the given translation on the point 2, negative 1. Give the coordinates of the translated point. So we're going 4 units left. So we're going to take our x value and go 4 units left of that, which puts us at negative 2, negative 1. Notice when we go to the left, our y value doesn't change, just our x value. Try B on your own. Now that you've had a chance to try B, let's try it together. So we want to move two units right and then three units up. So two units to the right of two and then three units up from negative one, which puts us at four, two. All right, so let's take a closer look at translations. A horizontal translation. Each point shifts right or left by whatever number of units we're talking about. So the x-coordinate changes. So for example, if you have 1, 2, and you're going to go plus 3, it's only going to be added to your x value because that's the value that's changing. So left would be if h is less than 0 and right would be if h is more than zero. A vertical translation, each point shifts up or down by a number of units. So if you're going up or down, you use the y-coordinate, so the y-coordinate is what's changing. If k is less than zero, you go down. If k is more than zero, you go up. All right, let's look at reflections. A reflection across the y-axis. Each point flips across the y-axis. So the x-coordinate changes. As you're flipping it across the y, the y is like your constant line. It's like your line of symmetry. So your x is what's going to change. And the opposite for reflecting across the x-axis. Your x is your line of symmetry, or your line of reflection. So that is what's going to be flipped over. So your y value will change. Let's practice. So translating and reflecting functions. So use a table to perform each transformation of y equals f of x. So tables are often very helpful when it comes to these problems. That way you can see exactly what you need to plot and then how to draw the graph. Okay, so we have x we're starting with negative 2, 4, so if we double check, negative 2 is at 4, negative 1 is at 0, 0 is at 2, and uh, 2 is at 2. But we're going to be moving down 2 units, so we're, trans or we're making a translation 2 units down. So our y value is going to change since we're going up or down. And since we're going down, we're going to subtract 2 from our y values. So 
we subtract 2 from 4, we end up with 2. 0 minus 2 gives us negative 2. 2 minus 2 gives us 0, and 2 minus 2 gives us 0. So then you would plot your x points, the points that did, that did not change, and your new y values, and then connect them. So plot your new points, and then connect them. Let's look at another example. What if we're reflection what if we're doing a reflection across the y axis? Well, if we're reflecting across that, if we are reflecting across the y axis, then your x value is what's changing because your y is your line of reflection. So, when you're flipping across an axis, you're basically going to be multiplying by a negative you're going to switch the sign of whatever it was previously because you're moving it to the exact opposite side. So what's the exact opposite of negative 2? The exact, the exact opposite of negative 2 is 2. The exact opposite of negative 1 is 1. Well, 0 doesn't have 1. And then for 2, it would be negative 2. So you're going to plot your y values this time because those were the ones that didn't change with your new x values and then connect the points. So in case you're wondering, the red is your new, the blue is your old or your original. Alright, let's step it up a notch here. We're going to talk about stretches and compressions. So when we're stretching horizontally, each point is pulled away from the y-axis. Notice how the blue is narrower than the red because it's being pulled away. We're stretching it horizontally. So the x coordinate is what changes, and you multiply for this one. So your x coordinate, in this case, you're multiplying it by 2, so 2 times the size. And then each point is pulled away from the x axis if you're going vertically. So you would be working with your y coordinate. So if you're dealing with vertical, your point that you're playing with, or points, you're going to be using your y's instead of your x's. For compressions, each point is pushed toward the y-axis. Now, for this to happen, the value that you're multiplying by has to be between 0 and 1 for both horizontal and vertical. It has to be between 0 and 1. So when you compress the graph, notice how your red graph is closer to the y-axis here. And notice how your red graph is closer to your x-axis for a vertical compression. All right, well, let's put this to practice. Stretching and compression functions. Use a table to perform a horizontal compression of y equals f of x by a factor of one half. We also know it's a compression because we're going by a factor that's between 0 and 1, not more than 1. If it was more than 1, we would be stretching. So we're going to be multiplying it by to our x value because it's horizontal. So when we're dealing with a horizontal, we mess with our x's. We leave our y's alone. So we're going to multiply each of our x values by 1 half. So 1 half times negative 1 gives us an output of negative 1 half. 0 times anything is still 0. 1 half times 2 is 1. And 1 half times 4 is 2. So now we plot our original y values, because those were the ones that did not change and our new x values. And we have successfully compressed the graph closer to the y-axis. And that ends our lesson on exploring transformations. We will be doing more with transformations as our class moves on.